Hello fellow investors, I'm Ben and this is GVD Investing, where I break down the latest stock market news, analyze stocks, and share my investing journey in hopes of making us all better investors. In this video, we'll take a look at two of the most exciting penny stocks in the esports and iGaming industry, two companies I'm extremely bullish on and think have massive upside potential for exponential growth in the coming years as gaming continues to disrupt the entertainment industry. In my opinion, I think Wall Street is still grossly underestimating the total addressable market of online gaming and esports, which leaves us retail investors a great opportunity to get in before these stocks realize their potential. Wall Street couldn't understand Amazon in the early days, or Netflix, or Facebook, or Tesla. They struggle to understand new concepts. I'm fairly certain they simply can't understand how big gaming has become. I think these two companies are well positioned to capitalize on this rapidly growing sector of entertainment. That said, I'm guessing you didn't come here to listen to me ramble about the gaming industry. You probably just want to know what stocks I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as a long-term shareholder of DraftKings, I was doing some research a few days ago after ARK Invest started buying because I wanted to know why they decided to open a position. One of the articles I came across had a very interesting title, Playing to Win. CEOs of DraftKings, Fans Unite, ESE, and Activision Blizzard embracing trillion dollar millennials demand for esports and iGaming. I had obviously heard of DraftKings and Activision before, as they are two of the biggest players in the gaming industry, but had never heard of Fans Unite or ESE. This immediately caught my attention. Any company being mentioned in the same sentence as those two companies needed further investigation. I was expecting to find two relatively established companies, similar in size to DraftKings or Activision. But I was shocked to find that Fans Unite and ESE are both penny stocks. Fans has a market cap of $65 million and ESE's is $62 million. Compared to DraftKings $25 billion market cap and Activision around $78 billion. So those are the two stocks I will be discussing in this video. Fans Unite and ESE Entertainment. But before we take a deeper look into each company, I'll just go over a couple quick points from two articles by the Wall Street Reporter that highlight the enormous potential of the gaming industry and the massive market opportunity for fans and ESE. If we take a look at this article from January 12th, it said multiple trends are converging, creating massive opportunities for the new paradigm of wagering. As millions of millennial consumers embrace online sports betting, esports and iGaming, governments are increasingly eager to legalize and drive desperately needed tax revenues. Online sports betting is emerging as the dominant growth theme of the decade, with billions of dollars in revenues generated worldwide from video games, streaming to online casinos, and sports betting. In another article from the Wall Street Reporter on January 27th, it said millennials and Gen Z now have 2.5 trillion in spending power replacing baby boomers as the dominant consumer force. The global video gaming industry took in an estimated $180 billion in 2020, more than sports and movies worldwide. The new generation prefers interactive forms of entertainment, such as video games and online betting on sports, and esports and iGaming. The more I looked, the more I kept coming across articles with titles like this one. Next super stocks on the move. Fans Unite. Or this one, capitalizing on mega trends in esports, psychedelics, healthcare 2.0, and Asia fintech. Next super stocks, ESE Entertainment. Or how about this article? ESE partners with ESTV, the NFL Alumni Association, and the American Cancer Society for Super Bowl esports event. For two companies I had never heard of before, they both seem to be garnering some pretty positive headlines while forming partnerships with some major players in their industry. I have been investing for over a year now, and in that time, I have rarely, if ever, heard the term super stock. Given what I was reading, it seemed both of these companies are well positioned to capitalize on the rapidly growing esports and iGaming industry, each one for different reasons. Let's take a look at their investor presentations to get a better idea of what each company does and why I am so bullish on each one of these stocks. First, let's take a look at Fans Unite. Okay, so if we take a quick look at the stock, it's currently sitting at around 90 cents. Even after pulling back about 30% in the past few weeks, it's still up over 130% in the last six months. The 52 week high was $1.32 Canadian, 
so it has pulled back a fair amount, leaving fans with a tiny $60 million market cap at the moment. This video will be focused on the stock ticker fans.cn because I'm in Canada. If you're American, you'll probably want to look at the ticker FunFF, same company, just fans is traded on the CSE, while FunFF is traded over the counter. So what does the company do? Fans Unite is a sports and entertainment company focusing on technology related to regulated and lawful online sports betting and other related products. Our mission is to be the iGaming industry leader by providing our partners and players the industry's most versatile and vertically integrated platforms with a portfolio of unique products and a focus on esports, sports betting, casino, and the next generation of bettors. Basically, the company is broken into three main segments. Business to consumer sports books and gaming platforms, the Fans Unite Sportsbook, ESP.bet, and esportspools.com, VamosGG.com, and McBookie.com. They also have business to business white label sportsbook platform, the Chameleon Gaming Platform, and business to business game development and licensing, the recently acquired Ascot Games. First, we'll take a look at their B2C offerings. The Fans Unite Sportsbook is an internally developed B2C sportsbook with a certified bet radar backend that will take wagers on all pro, college, and regulated sporting events. ESP.bet, esportspools.com, and vamosgg.com are all using their Chameleon esports platform. More on that in a sec. ESP.bet was the first esports betting site licensed in the Isle of Man. Esportspools.com was the first dedicated esports fantasy site. Combined, the sites have over 200,000 users in over 160 countries. Vamos GG is the latest site to launch on the Chameleon betting platform. It is a Latin American focused brand, with their next immediate focus being Brazil. Fans also owns McBookie.com, which is a B2C betting service in the UK that has strategically focused on the underserved Scottish market and clientele. McBookie has been in operation for over a decade but only has 10,000 active users. However, they did manage to record record revenue in October 2020 of over $600,000. In all honesty, I'm not sure why they feel the need to focus on such a small market, but maybe it's proof of concept or something. Fortunately, it's not the primary focus of their business. Personally, I think Brazil, the US, mainland Europe, and Asia would be far better off areas to focus on, but luckily they are. And it's great to see a company with such global reach already with plans for further expansion. In total, their B2C offerings have seen over $350 million in betting volume since inception and currently have over 300,000 registered users. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all of these sites are operating using their business to business chameleon esports platform, which is a complete B2B sports and esports white label iGaming solution. They have two distinct offerings turnkey and API which make it the most flexible gaming platform on the market. It has a robust client dashboard with tailored reporting and real-time analytics. So essentially they make the gaming platform and license it to other esports and iGaming sites. This is a great potential source of recurring revenue. It's technically software as a service. Speaking of recurring revenue we should take a look at their other B2B offering Ascot Games. I think this is probably the most exciting aspect of their business with the highest potential for exponential growth. Let me explain. Ascot Games is Ascot's newest division developing exclusive casino style RNG games with esports and video game themes. In addition to being offered to all partners on the Chameleon platform, Ascot is licensing its games to external casino aggregators, opening them up to hundreds of online casinos and sportsbooks. This is where things start to get really exciting and was actually the reason I decided to invest in Fans Unite. Going back to the article I found when researching news on DraftKings, it continued with this tidbit of information on Fans Unite. In their latest presentation at Wall Street Reporter's Next Superstock livestream, Fans CEO Scott Burton and President Darius Egdami explained how the company's latest distribution deal with an online casino games aggregator sets the stage for exponential revenue growth opportunities. In the next 12 months, Fans plans to expand its current line from 3 games to 12, 
while adding multiple aggregators for each game, reaching millions of new online casino customers worldwide. With each game generating as much as $500,000 in revenue per month per online casino, and the potential to be in hundreds of online casinos, these numbers can quickly add up. And I mean really quickly. Let's do some quick math. At 500k per game per month, that means each game can bring in $6 million per casino every year. If fans can get one game into 100 online casinos, that would equate to roughly $600 million a year in revenue. Fans currently have three games, but are expanding that lineup to 12. If they can get all 12 of their games into an online casino, that would bring in approximately $72 million annually per casino. 100 casinos would mean roughly $7.2 billion in annual revenue. Obviously, the casinos would likely get some sort of package deal, but you get the idea. These numbers become really large, really fast, even when being conservative. And this is only one segment of Fan Unite's business. The potential is enormous. If fans can expand their game lineup well beyond 12 games, while getting into several hundred casinos, this could easily become a multi-billion dollar company. With a current market cap of 62 million, one of their games could be making that each year in revenue. I see why Wall Street Reporter is calling this a potential super stock. After running some numbers, I totally agree. And that's not it for Fans Unite. They have lots of other stuff in the works too. On January 11th, fans closed an oversubscribed $13.4 million private placement driven by strong investor demand. The successful closing of this upsized financing provides further validation that the global gambling market is seeing a resurgence in demand from investors, said CEO Scott Burton. Despite the headwinds caused by the global pandemic in 2020, we saw consumers adopt and embrace online betting for its ease of access and simplicity. With our seasoned team of gaming operators, global B2C brands, and our industry-adopted B2B technology platform, we were able to execute on multiple milestones that delivered value to our customers and shareholders. As we now look to advance our operations globally, we believe this additional capital will allow us to explore strategic initiatives and execute on our vision of becoming a globally recognized iGaming leader. On December 16th, fans gained first mover advantage into the United States esports betting market as its long-term partner Gameco joined US bookmaking and Sky Ute Casino to establish the first dedicated esports sports book in the United States. Fans wholly owned subsidiary Ascot Entertainment will supply its iGaming platform, Chameleon, as part of a fully integrated esports betting solution. Through Gameco's partnership with Sky Ute Casino and US Bookmaking, Fans Unite will be the first iGaming solutions provider to receive significant exposure in the US esports betting market. And on December 7th, Fans received Malta Gaming Service License and Critical Gaming Supply and will now be able to offer a full spectrum of online gambling services in Europe covering casino, fixed odds betting, pool betting, and controlled skilled games. With MGA approval received, Fans Unite will be joining other highly respected gambling companies such as PokerStars, Betfair, and Unibet in operating their business within MGA regulations. So, needless to say, there's a lot to be excited about when it comes to Fans Unite. They are in a massive addressable market with solid product offerings, licensing deals, and partnerships that should really help the company grow rapidly in the coming years as they turn on more of their lucrative recurring revenue streams. In the meantime, they have plenty of cash to make it through, with almost $4 million in cash and only $550,000 of debt. With a market cap of $62 million, the upside potential for this company is huge. If they can grow to a $650 million market cap, you would 10x your money. If they can hit $6 billion, you would 100x your investment. Given their potential revenue, I think eventually hitting a $6 billion market cap is very doable for Fans Unite. I bought 718 shares last week at $0.88 cents and will certainly be adding more once it becomes available on Wellsimple. The only reason I only bought 718 shares is because that was all the cash I had left in my Questrade account and I won't be adding more to that account anytime soon as I'm trying a different approach with that portfolio. Fans is one stock I plan to add a lot more of in 2021. Now that we have a better understanding of Fans Unite, let's take a look at the other esports penny stock I'm extremely excited about. 
ESE Entertainment, ticker ESE.V on the TSX Venture Exchange. The stock is currently $1.50 per share, Canadian, with a market cap of $63 million. Over the past six months, the stock has shot up 400%, and that's after experiencing a 25% pullback from 52-week highs of $1.97. So what is ESE Entertainment? ESE is a Europe-based entertainment and technology company focused on gaming and esports, particularly on media rights relating to esports, physical and digital content creation, and distribution of esports related content. ESE is focused on bridging Europe, Asia, and North America. The company was founded in 2019 by Conrad Vasiela, a former professional football player in the CFL. Today, ESE has grown to consist of multiple assets and world-class operators in the gaming and esports industries. Basically, ESE is a world-class esports infrastructure company. They offer software for events and tournaments, physical infrastructure and broadcasting capabilities, existing global distribution for esports related content, tier one advertising and sponsorship partners, and a growing gaming franchise that includes professional teams. ESE has two core business lines, technology and their gaming franchise, with multiple revenue streams supporting each. The technology segment of their business offers digital tournament software, e-commerce, and simulation racing, while the gaming franchise has media rights, a professional esports team, and they offer owned and managed leagues. Some of their current partners and sponsors are Red Bull, Porsche, LG, and Neosurf. These are some pretty major companies to be working with, considering they've only been in business since 2019. If we take a look at some of their key investment highlights, they have an emerging position as a global esports platform. First mover advantage, Europe is still wide open for consolidation. They have a diversified business model, scalable through technology and the gaming franchise. They have an exceptional market opportunity. Gaming is a global mega trend with esports leading the way. And they have a strong management team, world class operators with over 10 year track record in the industry. In fact, Pedro Fernandez, the director of their Kick franchise, has over 20 years experience in esports and gaming. He was the Kick esports club founder. He was a former player for the club and is currently the chairman. He expanded the team roster into top esports games like League of Legends, CSGO, and more, and led Kick team to over 800 tournament awards and 500 tournament wins. The multiple revenue streams make this a very well diversified company. The first thing that caught my eye was the games they are already involved in. Apex Legends, Rocket League, League of Legends, FIFA, and Assetto Corsa. Primarily League of Legends and FIFA as those are two of the most widely played games on the planet. If we look at their company assets and how they plan to make money, you can see why there is growing excitement around this stock. The technology sector can make licensing revenue from their digital tournament software. They have product sales and affiliate revenue from e-commerce, and their simulation racing generates revenue by selling data like their 3D track scanning software. And that's only half of their business. They also have the gaming franchise, which owns media rights that they sell for esports events. Their professional esports team has sponsorship deals and brings in tournament winnings. And through their wholly owned and managed leagues, they can charge setup and entry fees. I honestly don't even know where to get started when calculating the potential revenue for this company five years from now. If they are able to execute, ESE could become a truly behemoth company in the esports industry. And execution does not seem to be a problem for this company. They already have a global distribution deal to facilitate expansion into Europe and lead the distribution, management, and operation of ESTV programming through European markets. The deal will expand ESE's content reach through ESTV's and its partners' global distribution channels, which include Roku, Amazon Fire, Dish Sling, Vizio, Samsung TV, National Cable Television Cooperative, Select TV, Tiki Live, and Simul TV. ESE also has a TV deal with Polsat, one of Europe's largest media and telecom companies. The deal is for its participation in the Ultraliga esports event, 
Ultra Liga is in collaboration with game publisher Riot Games and is broadcast on nationwide TV in certain parts of Europe and the internet. In 2019, Ultra Liga had over 24 million viewers tune in to its esports channel. ESC also has a deal with Porsche to manage and run certain gaming and esports events on their behalf, especially in simulation racing. And lastly is the success of their meta technology, which is a proprietary technology to run and operate digital esports and gaming events. The meta platform generates upwards of 1 million impressions per month, has 30,000 plus competitive gamer profiles across 25 countries and 18 games. Meta was used as a technology platform as part of the qualifiers for the 2019 Southeast Asia Games, where esports was a medal event for the first time in an international Olympic Committee sanctioned event. ESC has exclusivity for Meta's platform in certain parts of Europe. The companies also have a 50-50 split on profits from their partnership. It's great to see ESC with such a solid foothold in the European market, as it's one of the largest esports markets in the world at the moment, with lots of room for future growth. In 2019, esports brought in over $350 million in revenue in the EU, with an online population of over 583 million people. Of that, 32 million are considered to be esports enthusiasts. For those of you that don't necessarily understand just how big the esports industry is and how quickly it is growing, maybe this will put it into perspective for you. In 2019, Kyle Giersdorf, the Fortnite World Cup champion, won more prize money for winning that tournament than Novak Djokovic did for winning Wimbledon or Tiger Woods received for winning the Masters. That is some significant coin for playing video games. In 2019, global esports revenue surpassed $1 billion, and the industry is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of over 22% for the next couple years at the very least. As of 2019, online gaming had already surpassed box office and music as the primary source of entertainment globally. Online gaming is already four times larger than box office and almost eight times larger than the music industry. Online gaming is expected to be a nearly $200 billion industry by 2022. I knew gaming was popular. I didn't realize it was this big already. Fortunately, ESE did, and they are ready to capitalize on this rapidly growing industry. Their current focus is to increase revenue by aggressively focusing on top line sales and margin expansion. They hope to execute on an accurate acquisition strategy. They want to expand global distribution by signing large scale deals for direct distribution to the United States and Asia. And finally, they plan to further increase the global brand value of their esports franchise. There's a lot to be excited about when it comes to ESC. They have multiple revenue streams with potential to bring in enormous amounts of revenue with very good margins. I love the fact they have partnerships and sponsorships with Red Bull, Porsche, and LG. Other than the lack of existing revenue, it's really hard to find something I don't like about this company. The market cap is extremely low given their addressable market, and ESC is about to turn on multiple different revenue streams all at the same time. The TV distribution deal with ESTV through Roku, Amazon Fire, and Samsung TV is a massive opportunity that will give ESE instant global brand exposure. Personally, I think this is just the beginning. As video game technology continues to advance, people become more and more connected online, and virtual reality becomes more mainstream, I expect video gaming and esports will continue to gain a larger share of the entertainment industry for decades to come. I'm extremely bullish on ESE and have been buying pretty heavily over the last week. I now have 875 shares with a cost basis of $1.48. I plan to grow the position to at least 1,000 shares before letting it ride in my portfolio. I think this stock has the potential to be one of the biggest winners in my portfolio. I have never dumped this much into a penny stock before, so it will be very interesting to see how this one plays out. As risky as it might be, I have a really good feeling about this one. So what do you think? Will you be buying either of the stocks I talked about in this video? Fans Unite or ESE? I would love to hear your thoughts on these companies, so make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you'll be investing into either of these stocks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that pretty much does it for this video. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate you. I hope you found value in this video, whether you like these companies or not. If you haven't already, 
please hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out by letting YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. If you want to be notified of future videos, don't forget to hit that notification bell. Until next time, thank you for tuning in, take care of yourself, and keep investing wisely.